Good evening folks. I've drawn up a Myford ML10 bed here. The ML10 is the smaller version or the smaller brother or sister of the ML7 and um, Super 7 beds. I thought I'd be explaining a little bit about the wear and then also I have a scraped. It has a 80 millimeter deep bed, 700 millimeters across or length and it's a dovetail construction. My M ML10 bed was not that much worn, roughly three to four hundredths of a millimeter at the most, uh, which is say 1.5 thousandths of an inch. Uh, as suspected, the saddle rides here to pressure, so you get the most wear in this area. And so my bed also was, and there is the result. Not too bad really. You have an area over here, worn. This is really underneath the tailstock. No, this is the tailstock. It's the headstock. So. I guess this is lowest here, so not too bad. But we will of course have to measure how low. So what is the difference between here and here? Um, if you draw this uh, from the side, you can say the pristine bed is like this and then comes the wear. Down to minus three hundreds here three to four then maybe a little bit more so uh, room zero this I took care of by uh, mainly machine scraping with the biax in circles which by the nature of it when you rough scrape you cover uh, what Richard calls do you do you paint scraping or area scraping, you cover the whole area. So I tried to get rid of this as fast as possible. And to my uh, learning then, the most economical way to do is then to to use this uh, this machine uh, scraper. I use uh, the circle technique quite uh, fast. about uh, eight or ninth time I think I am within uh, half a tau here from here to here one hundredth of a millimeter difference um, at the maximum I usually so I'm about um, four thousands of a millimeter deep and this uh, this time I think I was a little bit shallow I didn't really put uh, put pressure on it so each of those maybe divided into three to get uh, one hundredth of a millimeter I think I took uh, three or maybe four passes so all together to get down here was about uh, uh, nine to 16 passes. When you get down to the finish stages, you of course will want to move in individual marks with this technique, the crosses it's called when you machine scrape, also hand scrape. 
and this will not cover the whole area so you will have uh, in uh, this case then for each scrape mark you will have a certain coverage well in this case well area scraping here with the with the um, uh, circles technique i get almost 100 percent coverage because I, I remove all area which i know is high this technique you remove maybe uh, you're down to 40 or 50 percent coverage for each pass so you take it this way and then you cross your cuts take it the other way and then you fill out and then of course getting into the final stages as we learned you shall try to keep the depth and then you will you will gradually then cut finer and finer and finer to the uh, to the point that you will get of course these individual points yes. Roughing doesn't matter, just get rid of this so that you get down one way or another to the lowest area. And um, I'd like to be able to calculate, so by knowing that I'm 3 to 4 out, knowing the normal, uh, let's say, um, 4 thousandths deep or a millimeter deep cut I take then I can also calculate how many passes and how much time how long it takes and of course knowing the depth you scrape that's rule number three that's important because then you can predict how many strokes sorry that are needed passes that are needed and sort of a way know the scope of work so that you can say okay it'll take me 20 passes to get down here so uh, knowing that depth of scrape for each mark uh, or each uh, stroke you make is important and if you were to do this for the money uh, for money of course you would want to know this so knowing that i take let's say four thousands in this case then which is shallow and then i have to take um, uh, take down uh, let's say four hundreds I would say I have to take at least 10 passes but in reality you're not covering all so it'll be like 10 to 15 I guess so that's more or less what what I also came uh, came at when I counted Oh yeah, now it inches better. I want to hinge over there and here. I have to hinge apart so that it hinges roughly 30% um, in. That means that you have a, a balance between um, being high in the middle or high in, in um, uh, the sides. So it's, it's flat, it's a test for flatness. It's a little bit like that, but coming along. When you hinge and then you can see this will be still. This one is more... Uh, and then actually you should push down on the parts or places where it hinges. Into the finishing stages, the, the bed is then really sucked down. So it's hard to move because of the vacuum and the... Or, uh, the, the flatness causing the vacuum the air escapes now it's flat to within the uh, uh, what the, my plate can do and I measured up which is two thousandths of a millimeter or let's say one ten thousandths of an inch or less than that this area here is <laughs> really no concerns this is under the headstock but just to see if we are within range 
so blue spot so within half a hundreds half a hundreds um i think we'll call it today then here now we used the highlighter on the surface as you may see that uh, gives the blue spots uh, or gives me a better chance to see the blue spots because of the contrast that gives to the shiny surface I haven't been able to get rid of the scratch marks, uh, the hacksaw marks. Uh, this bed is supposedly um, you can't grind it down to more than a certain amount. So I, now I just scraped it down to the to the minimum amount. I can fill in these pockets. I think for um, let's say for at least for looks, and I can also use. A turkite uh, strip that only goes as far as this so that it shouldn't matter really that's at least sort of a plan I have the mating saddle have that only to be, be uh, with lining material until here so that there is an air gap here so I don't ride on these this is Rulon, piece of Rulon. So what I thought was that I should put Rulon on the saddle, um, but leave out a little bit to the rear, so that when this is slid on, it doesn't ride on that, let's say, uh, half a centimeter 10 uh, five millimeter surface so it's a little bit shy of that so then it will not matter at all now switch to a narrower blade um more a little bit more curvature i think it's a 60 60 radius and I've set the stroke length uh, smaller or shorter and I also have have um, reduced the speed now I can take more like a um, the finishing pass each Just picking the blue spots. Not trying to take them all away, but cutting them in two. You'll end up with the pattern and and the depth of cut will give you then the needed oil um, oil retention uh, cap capacities. and longevity meaning that the parts can hold i noticed when i was here that um, there was some more resistance and i think i got sloppy and i went a little bit like this so this means a scratch sure enough a small scratch luckily underneath the headstock So pay attention, it's easy to, to do that.
especially when you think you're done and at the end or get tired or working with the smaller blades and not keeping the angle and holding them the scraper correctly. 